This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to discuss viewports, view panels, and cameras in more detail. Again, the central portion of the My Interface is the viewport area. In this case, I have a single view panel, which is looking through a single camera, the PERSP or perspective camera. Now, there are no objects in the scene yet, However, I do have a grid. This grid is provided by default by Maya. Now, if your grid is not visible, it could be hidden. Go up to the Display drop-down menu and choose Grid to show it. Now, since mine's already visible, if I choose this, it will hide it. But I can always go back to that same menu item to re-display it. Now, the grid has many uses inside Maya. Many have to do with modeling and animation. However, we're going to use the grid just as reference so we can see how to move the camera and how the view will change. Now there are several different ways to move the camera. The easiest way is to use the Alt key on the keyboard in combination with your mouse buttons. For example, if I press the Alt key, press the left mouse button and drag, I can rotate. So I can rotate around the grid. Now, the grid is not actually moving. It's in the same place in 3D space. The camera, however, is moving. And because the camera is moving, its view of the grid changes. So that was Alt, left mouse button. If I press Alt and then press the middle mouse button and drag, I can scroll left, right, or up or down. If I press the Alt key and the right mouse button, I can dolly. If I drag left, that dollies backwards. If I drag right, it dollies forwards. Now you can use the Alt key and the various mouse buttons in any combination that you like. For instance, I can press the Alt key, keep it held down, and then drag with my left mouse button to rotate, then switch to my middle mouse button to scroll, then switch back to my left mouse button to rotate, and then jump to the right mouse button to dolly. So in other words, you can use the three mouse buttons in any combination that you like to get the view that you want. Now I am moving the camera around in 3D space. If it is a perspective camera, you are operating in 3D space, which means the camera can move in three different directions and rotate in three different directions. These are called XYZ. In fact, there's a little XYZ icon at the bottom left. Each one of these directions, X, Y, or Z, is considered an axis. You can think of an axis as a dimension like width or height or depth. In Maya, Y corresponds to height or up and down. X corresponds to width or left and right. And Z corresponds to depth, as in forward or backward. We'll discuss these different dimensions in more detail and their associated transformations as we go through the various videos. For now, just keep in mind that the camera is moving in three dimensions. And again, this is possible because I'm using a perspective camera. There is another shortcut for moving the camera, which is this camera cube at the top right. For example, I can click the little home icon to send the camera back to its start position. In other words, its home position. And there's the home position. You also notice that the cube has words on it that correspond to different orthographic views top, front, right in this case. So I can use this cube to switch from a perspective view to orthographic view. Again, an orthographic view is flat. It's much like a map. It has two dimensions, so you can scroll in an orthographic view or dolly in that view, but not rotate. So for example, if I press the word top on this cube or click the word top, I go to a top orthographic view. So the camera is placed directly above the grid. At this point, I can dolly with the right mouse button, which makes the camera go closer or farther away to or from the grid. Or I can scroll, which moves the camera left, right, or up or down. But I cannot rotate an orthographic view without breaking the orthographic view. Again, orthographic view is perfectly flat and basically two-dimensional. If I do try to rotate, I'm back into three dimensions. In fact, you'll see the cube goes back to a cube shape as opposed to being flat. In any case, this cube is a great shortcut for going to different orthographic views or going back to the original perspective view. You can go back to the perspective view by rotating or simply going to the home position. Now, if you are in an orthographic view, say the top view, then notice there are additional little arrows you can use. The two curvy arrows at the top right rotate the camera in 90 degrees in either direction. 
In other words, counterclockwise or clockwise. The little arrows along the side of the cube will switch to different views automatically. For instance, I'm on top now. If I click the top little arrow, that flips me to the back. If I click it again, I'm back to the top. If I click the left arrow, I'm on the right view. Click it again, I'm on the front view. Click it again, I'm on the left view. So these allow you to cycle through the different orthographic views. Again, if I want to go back to perspective, I simply rotate the camera. Now, the orthographic views are available through dedicated cameras outside of the perspective camera. Now, in order to get to those, you have to go to those other cameras by going to a four view. You can go to a four view by going to this four view icon on the left. If I click that, now I can see my perspective view panel, plus my top view panel, my front view panel, and my side view panel. Now I'm just going to hide the grid for the moment because it's a little hard to see the labels at the bottoms of those windows. So I'll go back to the display and turn off the grid. So now you can see where it says top, front, and side. Now whatever view panel is activated will get this camera shortcut cube. In order to activate a panel, simply click along the top of the panel bar. So there's a front, and there's a side. You can also use the cube in these orthographic views, just as I did in the perspective view, as a shortcut. Now I'll go ahead and turn on the grid again. And then we'll try that shortcut cube. For instance, I'm on the side view now, which is actually the right view. If I can click a little side arrow to jump to the front view, or a little top arrow to jump to the top view, or the bottom one to go to the front view once again. I can't rotate in the dedicated orthographic view. And I know it's dedicated because it's using an orthographic camera. In other words, the top, front, or side camera are orthographic cameras. The perspective camera is a perspective camera. So if I am in a dedicated orthographic view, like the side, I can still use my Alt middle mouse button to scroll and my Alt right mouse button to dolly. I cannot use my rotate. In fact, when I try to rotate, it gives me a no symbol. I can only rotate in the perspective view. However, you can use any of the view panels that you find useful for whatever you're working on. Now, since we have a four view, this brings up another trick you can do, which is minimizing or maximizing a window. In other words, minimizing or maximizing a view panel. Now, you can always do it through the shortcuts along the left. For instance, here's a single view. I can click that. And that gives me a single view, which is my perspective view. I can always go back to the four view again, too. However, you can have more control by using the space bar. For example, if I go to the perspective view panel, activate it, hit the space bar, it maximizes that view. If I hit the space bar again, it minimizes it. I can do the same thing with the other cameras. I can go to the top view panel, activate it, press the space bar to maximize it, Press the space bar again to minimize it. You can do that as many times as you want to just to make the windows larger or smaller to make it more convenient. So that's the basics of manipulating the cameras. You have a lot of different options. It's a little tricky to figure out how to move through the 3D space in this